Yeah, that's right. Yep. So Raylene, how did the decision come about? It's been a long and complicated process. Uh, we've worked really closely with all the key stakeholders. Uh, the Broncos and the Bulldogs have worked really closely together to make sure we had an outcome that was good for us, um, good for Ben, um, and ultimately we've looked after the player. Yeah, we've um, Ben will uh, transfer his current contract to the Broncos for the next two years, and then he has negotiated a third year for 2016 for new terms. What, uh, what sort of compensation uh, did you get? Yeah, there is some compensation which both um, the Bulldogs and the Broncos think is fair and reasonable, and we're really happy with that. What does that mean for the rest of the season in terms of Ben playing for the Bulldogs? He's still currently um, carrying that ankle injury, so until that comes right, then when that comes right, Des will assess him, and if he's ready to play, then Des will pick him up. Yeah, we hope that's not the case because we really do hope that his injury is going to come right and he can at least see out some time for the fans and the people who have supported him over a long period of time, but it is injury dependent. Just on the fans, do you expect some Bulldogs fans to be aggrieved at losing their best player? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's been a very tough decision. It's been a tough decision for the club to release him. It's been a difficult decision for Ben to make the decision to go. But, um, you know, we hope that they see the professional process that we've all been through and support him and wish him the best you know, as he moves to the Broncos. Um, I think ultimately when you've got a player that comes to you and says to you, you know, this is a family situation and I, you know, need, think I'm going to be a better player and a better person when I'm closer to my family, that's a really hard thing to say no to. Will he be allowed to play, it's part of the deal, will he be allowed to play against the Bulldogs? Yes he will. And what, is he paying the compensation or is it the Broncos? No, the Broncos and the Bulldogs have come to an agreement. Uh, really pleased, um, relieved, pleased. It's been a long process. Um, he recognised that it's challenging um, and that all the stakeholders had to work through those things. But now we've got there, he's pleased. Do you accept it's totally family reasons or is it financial? No, it's, it, it is genuinely family reasons. As I said, um, they've taken the two year contract as is across, so it's not, a, it's not about financial and uh, you know what he's done in 2016 is up to him. Were you, um, were you quite conscious of the fact that they just took your existing contract and came it across so that it wouldn't set a precedent for other players? Certainly that was hugely helpful in the discussions, yes. If he wasn't granted the release, would he have stayed at Canterbury and played? Did he tell you or he set out the season? No, no, no. There was, it was always very open that he, you know, hoped that we would, could come to an agreement that suited. But ultimately, ultimately, if we hadn't, he was going to stay and play with the Bulldogs. Yes. What's your reaction to the other players? Yeah, it's early days. I haven't. I've actually just been here in a meeting all day. I really haven't had a chance to talk to them. But they've been aware that it's been happening over a period of time. And you know, I think that's the reality. They want happy players playing around them. And you know, Ben's been in a really difficult place for a wee while now. Who's involved in the conversation? Was Des involved in? Process. Very much, yeah. Des is you know, obviously critical to our football program and had to make considerations around roster and what the implications of releasing Ben were, but ultimately when he re recognised that Ben had made that mental shift, it was the right time to release him. What about a replacement? We've got no, we're in no firm discussions at the moment with anyone around replacement. Josh Morris is doing a great job at fullback and Des is really happy with his progress. Have you talked to Blake Ferguson's speaking? Uh, no, we haven't. Is he sad to go? Is it, is it a sort of a, you know, a bit of sweet ending for him? leaving the club that he's played for and to go and you know, make the switch back to over to the Broncos. Yeah, I think it is, and I think you know he's. This is his, would have been his eighth year next year. He's done seven years. He's been right through the with a whole lot of juniors out of the Canterbury program, and and it really is the Bulldogs that have grown and developed Ben Barber into the great player he is today. So there's no doubt, um, you know, he is appreciative of all that the Bulldogs have done for him. Um, but you know, he has to look at his new opportunities and be excited about that as well. Were well, some players unhappy that you stuck by him and now he's no, no, it's all been, you know, they recognise that the reality of football these days is it's a commercial business and you have to make good decisions that are good for the whole club. There was a lot of talk about issues that he was having with other teammates and the Bulldogs. Are you confident that wasn't a contributor in this? I am very confident that wasn't a contributor. Yeah. Is Israel Folau on the radar? Uh, my understanding is Israel Folau is going to start a sign for rugby and that's, that's where it's at. It should be an announcement any day. What about James O'Connor? There was some talk that Des might be interested in him. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about a lot of players, but um, as I said, we are having no f no formal discussions with anyone at the moment. What do you say to Bulldogs fans who, you know, kids idolise Ben and have you know, grown up watching him? What do you say to them? Yeah, I think
think they're disappointed, but I think they have to recognise that this has been a very professional process. Um, we've worked through it to make sure that it's been discussed behind closed doors. We've got an outcome commercially that's as good for all parties, and it is a reality of modern day sport. Do you think this opens the door for a lot of other compassionate cases or even non genuine ones? I think it's difficult, um, you know, and I think it is the modern footballer that we know now. Uh, and you know, I've been on record over the last couple of days to suggest that, as part of the NRL salary cap review, they need to look at some of those things to see if, um, you know, players need to understand when they sign contracts they mean something. Um, you know, in the same way as if I sign a phone contract and I want to get out after 12 months, I pay some break fee or compensation, and that's the reality of the types of conversations I'd like to see all of our NRL players have so that they're better educated when they get out into the real world. So if you hadn't got compensation for the Broncos, which you're not necessarily entitled to, would you have released it? I can't answer that, I don't know. Raylene, would you say that this is one of the most difficult things you've done since you've joined the club? Yeah, yeah certainly, you know, it has. And, it, and, and because there's so many stakeholders and, um, you know, uh, people that are passionate about the Bulldogs and passionate about Ben, it has been a, a challenging situation. Mm -hmm.